Not sure where this is coming from. Um, I welcome everybody. Um, I'm going to try and present the um, async save um, feature uh, design uh, within the next few minutes. Um, it's a it's an interesting feature that has um, a lot of uh, implications. Um, my name is uh, is Ashot Akashian, and I usually go by Ash. Um, if that is easier for you to pronounce. What I'm going to try to do today is um, present the, uh, the, the, the issue that we're trying to uh, tackle, um, the challenges that follow from that particular um, attempt, the risks that we're, we, we have to uh, be cognizant of whenever we're doing a major change in the core of our product, um, and how we came about um, with the solution and the results that, that we've achieved. Um, again, this is this is a summary, and I have to apologize for for this persistent pop up um, that's um, um, hiding my text. So the problem um, is that saving and uploading are two uh, separate processes or um, uh, stages um, during the lifetime of editing a, a document. But uh, from the user's perspective, they are one and the same. And, and this, though not an issue in and of itself, the fact that behind the scenes, um, there are different stages um, to saving a document as seen from the user's perspective, um, that also involves um, the network uh, and storage and a lot of other complicated details like the access token and the permissions that the user the user has um, and whether or not the token is valid or has expired all of these things you know come into view uh, when you uh, uh, dig a little bit deeper but from the user's perspective uh, they just want saving to work they want auto saving to work in the background they just want to be confident that their data is safe and secure at all times um, saving is is not not an issue in the sense that it is within our uh, control um, and uploading is the one that is a little bit more problematic because it involves the network, which can be unreliable, slow, um, and of course, it also blocks the, uh, the UI while we were doing it. Uh, and that was the main issue, that we, we didn't want um, uh, the failures of the um, uploading to become um, either apparent or uh, problematic for, for the user. Um, the, the challenge in trying to change this behavior and make it um, asynchronous, meaning that it, it wouldn't block um, and, and also make it flexible enough that it would retry and would be able to uh, pick up uh, uh, where it left off if it was, you know, retrying a failed upload, um, is that we needed to change the core um, socket management within uh, uh, the code base. And that means that um, we we needed to make the uh, upload operation um, asynchronous without any blocking, but we also had to um, deal with um, all the different features that we were already using uh, that existed without breaking any uh, compatibility for uh, our uh, customers and our deployments. Um, and that, of course, includes all sorts of variations of SSL and um, uh, proxies and um, uh, details of the HTTP protocol. Um, making a change to the sockets and the, the networking layer obviously um, um, inherently brings a lot of risks that um, we have to manage upfront and we have to be very mindful of um, lest we you know, risk the stability of our product and uh, of course the, um, the, the level of satisfaction of our customers and partners. Um, uh, changing the HTTP layer um, obviously is, is, is very much um, reinventing the wheel in this context. Um, however, um, the fact that we were already using uh, a ready-made uh, library um, also means that we were basically um, 
you know, buying the flexibility and ease of uh, use of ready-made functionality um, and trading that with scalability and high performance and all sorts of advanced management um, uh, you know, features and abilities, meaning uh, POCO, which was which which is a library that we um, had been using, um, gives us the ease of uh, you know accessing all of those uh, HTTP features, uh, but at the same time, obviously, it it um, it limits our ability to make this a, an enterprise level product uh, with all the um, necessary advanced. Uh, features and controls that are uh, expected in that domain. Um, on the application level itself, uh, we needed to um, make sure that uh, the, uh, the 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 two different save and upload stages uh, remain separate. But at the same time, we had to uh, contend with the fact that saving uh, is uh, not always an independent stage. Um, saving has to happen, for example, before renaming a document, which might not be obvious. Um, but if you think about it, you, you do want to save before renaming or converting. Um, and indeed, whenever you have a, a conflict uh, resolution, meaning you're trying to upload an older version of a document uh, because somebody else um, updated the document uh, whilst you were editing it. And, and that, that can happen in, in certain uh, scenarios uh, that involve uh, mismanagement of the the, the uh, hierarchy of the storage versus the editing, all of these um, corner cases, you know, ha had to be uh, fairly, um, you know, thought out and uh, planned for. Uh, otherwise, we would break things. Um, so all of these things, you know, bring um, risks that we had to, um, um, you know, maintain and manage and make sure that we're not regressing. Uh, the solution. Uh, that we came up with uh, was fairly straightforward. Um, we wanted to leverage uh, the already existing uh, asynchronous sockets that we had in the um, uh, in the in the core uh, code base, uh, which we had developed actually um, at Colabra. Uh, these the asynchronous sockets themselves um, uh, work for all of our uh, web socket uh, communication which is the heart of um, all the communication with the browser. Uh, and that was, uh, you know, perfectly fine, but we did not have, um, you know, a regular um, uh, connection oriented HTTP protocol implementation uh, that we could use for external uh, servers. Specifically in this case for uploading, we need to communicate with the, um, uh, the storage host uh, that is provided to us, which is a, an opaque URL that could be HTTP or HTTPS. And what we needed to do was basically uh, make sure that we're using the same existing mechanisms that we had for asynchronous HTTP, which is extremely um, uh, lean and performant uh, because we uh, reused uh, a single thread basically to do all of the uh, socket um, plumbing on the low level uh, kernel and hardware um, um, abstractions. And we needed to extend that uh, to be used for pretty much any, um, any HTTP uh, request uh, seamlessly. And that's the approach that we took. And on the uh, implementation level, basically we uh, created uh, new abstract uh, concepts for HTTP request and response. Um, and all the necessary plumbing and the protocol parsers were also implemented in a very modular way. Um, as we will see very soon, uh, that was critical for making things uh, highly testable and uh, flexible. Um, at the same time, we, we wanted to make sure that um, uh, when we're replacing POCO, we're, we're leaving most of the periphery uh, unchanged so that it would the new code would be compatible with the existing interfaces within our code base in general. Um, this highly complex um, graphic is a depiction of um, really the simplicity of the architecture. Um, we have a single thread that does all the listening uh, to the um, external incoming uh, uh, connection requests from the browsers. Um, and we have a single polling thread uh, behind the scenes that is responsible for doing the plumbing 
for us. Um, that single thread is extremely efficient in that um, it passes all of the uh, available sockets to the kernel and the kernel only needs to let us know um, when there is um, data on at least one of the sockets. And of course, um, we, we might get multiple sockets with data and we process them um, uh, essentially in the same uh, poll cycle. Um, this very same uh, design is extended to be used with um, all of the communication that we do for uploading. Um, whenever we need to uh, um, upload the document to the storage, uh, what we do is we create an HTTP request and we just pass it on to the polling thread, just like um, any other browser connection. And the same uh, plumbing logic basically works seamlessly. Um, and this avoids any extra uh, threads, any extra uh, kernel level overhead. In fact, we don't even add uh, a single um, uh, low level uh, system call uh, beyond the existing uh, poll um, call already. Um, and, and this basically means that we get um, all of the advantages of asynchronous uh, socket communication without any uh, blocking pretty much for free, um, or at least nominal cost. One minute um, to go, Ash. Yes. <laughs> um, so in terms of in terms of testing this, this was uh, the, the modular approach was critical, extremely critical, um, because we wanted to make sure that we can extensively test uh, all of the new code and make sure that we have very high coverage. Okay. Uh, in addition, we did um, implement fuzzing uh, on top of all of the uh, unit tests that we have um, on both unit test level and fuzzing on the HTTP round trip level. And that gave us um, very, very good results. Um, in short, uh, we were able to improve the performance overall and especially for the users in terms of uh, the UI. There was no longer um, blocking or um, any noticeable change, um, even when the um, network was very slow or the, um, uh, the uh, storage was uh, not responsive um, or indeed failed completely. And we had to retry sometimes multiple times before we succeeded. Um, the code base is uh, fairly, um, as I say, modular and it replaces POCO and it brings um, the, the, the solution to a more homogeneous uh, state internally, such that we don't have different libraries. We just have a single um, networking um, layer and concept that we reuse over and over in multiple places. Um, thank you for listening. And I'll take questions later. Great job. Sexy feature.